Hi, welcome to African Vibes. Remember on the very first episode, I told you that sometimes it's just me and you talking to camera like this. Other times I'll be interviewing people. Other times I'll be out in the streets bringing you events. Well, this weekend I'm going to bring you a lot of events. But before that, I wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. I want to talk about the politics of black hair. Now, this is a subject that people get very sensitive about. So I want to handle it on a historical level. It's not a personal, this is not a personal attack. It's not a personal perspective, it's historical, it's evidence, it's from research that I have done. Okay, now did you know that before black people were colonized, our hairstyle was very much part of our lifestyle? You know, before we became Nigerians or Zambians or Senegalese or Rwandan, we were members of a tribe. Countries like Togo, Sierra Leone, um, Liberia, or well, maybe not Liberia, but um, countries across Africa were created after Africans were enslaved. So Europeans sat in Europe and they decided that Germany will have this part, Belgium will have this part, France will have this part, and then later names were given to those countries. So prior to that, Africans did not live as members of countries. They lived as members of tribes. It's very important to remember this. Africans, there are over 2,000 different tribes in Africa. I can't name them all, but some of the bigger ones are maybe like the Akan, the Congo, the Fulani, the Shona, in the Bele, um, Hausa, the, the um, Ibo, the Yoruba, Mandinke. There are a lot of tribes across Africa, over 2,000, okay? And tribes people were colonized, not, not members of countries. Now, one of the key things about being an African was your hair. Your culture told you who you were, and hair was part of culture. So all the different tribes, they had their own food, dress, um, ceremonies, rites of passage, etc. But hair was a key part of being a member of the tribe. Your hair will automatically tell you the tribe you came from. It can tell you your status. So you can tell by somebody's hairstyle whether they were a king, or whether they're a widow, or whether they just come from war, or whether they just done a rite of passage. Hair was very much important to the African. Now, African women have always worn extensions in their hair. Nobody can deny that. We always had extensions. We did elaborate hairstyles that went upwards, had all kinds of crazy styles like this. When I say crazy, I don't mean crazy mad. I mean crazy as in wonderful. You know, we had hairstyles with extensions. We did that. colonized one of the first things the Europeans did was to cut off all our hair because our hair was a big part of identity and we could recognize each other if I see your hairstyle I will know straight away oh you're a member of my tribe or you're a member of a different tribe I could recognize you just by your hairstyle so the first thing they did was to cut our hair and thereby losing who we were they were telling us you're no longer an Akan you're no longer an Indebele you are now a slave you no longer have the identity so they took away the identity by taking away your hair that's what they did now, on the plantations, when Africans were taken to the New World, white women were said to have been very, very jealous of black women because you, our hair was wonderful. We could do so much of it. White women could not do what we could do for our hair. So they didn't want to see our hair. So on the plantations, black women had to cover their hair. That was a law. The, the Tegan law, I think it's 1748. I need to check on that. But the Tegan law, right? Creole women were not allowed to show their hair. And from that period that black women started wearing, or Creole women started wearing elaborate headgear, they thought, you know what, if you don't let us wear our hair out, we'll show you how we, what we can do with headgear. So they started wearing all this lovely, lovely, elaborate, you know, headgear. They started finding fancy ways to wear their head wraps and hats. It was beautiful. Now, one interesting thing about that period was that the children that the white slave owners had with the black slaves they were seen as better because of the lighter skin and hair their hair was not seen as so savage so they were allowed to leave their hair out they were seen as okay and it was from that period that black people started having colorism and hair issues prior to that black people did not have issues with our hair of our color i'm not saying there were no light skinned black people before colonization there were like the sun tribe, they're very light skinned. So black people have always been all shades, from as dark as me to as light as I can get. We've always had different shades, but there's no documented history that I've come across in my research of black people hating each other because of the color of our skin. We did have tribal wars. We also had tribal marriages. We also had tribal conflicts, tribal friendships, tribal marriages. We had tribal, we had relationships, but I don't have any evidence of black people having fought or having hated each other because of the color of our skin. 
all evidence shows that this came about during slavery, where now the children that the white slave masters had with the black slaves were seen as better than the black people. So after slavery, this thing was passed on down, where black people wanted to attain this idea of being accepted, and to be accepted meant ha having to be light and having to try and try and get master's hair as much as possible. So we went through all sorts, relaxing our hair, jerry curl, we've gone through all sorts to try and get to the level where white people's hair becomes the hair that we have to make acceptable, because now we've been removed from our, the idea of liking our own hair. Some people don't even know the history of how we came to not like our own hair. Now, something really happened during the late 1980s and early 1990s. Music, I think, plays a huge part in how black people see themselves. In those days, we had groups like Arrested Development, Soul to Soul, Queen Latifah was about being a queen, and MC Light, and music was about empowering black people. So when they sang about black women, were queens, were empresses, men were king. You had even Tupac was wearing dashiki. You know, the fashion in those days was dashiki and those African hats. There was a sense of African pride. Hairstyle in those days, funky dreads, natural hair. I mean, the natural hair and the funky dreads, that kind of look, the soul to soul movement. In the late 80s, natural hair was a big thing. People were identifying with being African. You even had people in the Caribbean who before used to see, we're not African, all of a sudden realizing that, oh, we are African. And they wanted to be part of the movement. African Americans were identifying with going back home. There was a huge sense of pride in being African. You know, and then all of a sudden the music changed. It just changed. Artists like Queen Latifah, Arrested Development, Soul to Soul, Money Love, they all brought a sense of pride in wearing natural hair. But then it all changed. All of a sudden, black women were no longer queens and empresses. They were now hosts. They were now bitches. They were now, this music was not about having big ass. You know, it was no longer about going to the motherland and looking for love and loving your neighbor. Everything changed. The, the music video changed. It became all bling bling and expensive jewelry and shooting up your neighbors. You know, and from that, and, and from that, the image of the black woman also changed because before the black woman used to have the natural hair in the videos, but now she was wearing wigs. And you know, if you notice, that's where the wigs really started coming in. And from the first, it was like shorter black wigs, but it got longer and longer, straighter and straighter to the extent that now black women are into long, bone straight, shiny hair. That's become our daily image. Some go for the auburn look, some go for the blonde look. It's like the more successful you become, the more you aspire to look white and get blonder and straighter hair. I'm not saying we can't have natural straight hair. Black women, well, natural straight hair. We can have straight hair because we can relax our hair, we can hot comb it, we can. But our hair in its most elements, in its most natural element, is not straight, it's coily. And we've been made to hate that coily hair so much that now, when you wear that hair, you're seen as radical controversial rebel <laughs> i mean does it make sense when you choose to wear the hair that comes out of your scalp you're crazy or you're afrocentric how can you be afrocentric when europeans wear european hair they're not eurocentric they're just being themselves you know and then black women will say yeah but then um, it's it's it, i'm not my hair we've gone to the point where i'm not my hair and i will say well actually we are our hair because one dna you know your hair is part of your dna hair has been used to identify people in crime scenes if an uncle died today and said, listen, I've got a million dollars, but you can only claim it by using the hair on your head as DNA, you'd just go and say, oh, my hair is part of me. You would say I'm part of my hair. So in terms of biology, you are part of your hair, okay? In terms of, um, in, in ter in terms of socially, you are part of your hair because your hair tells you who you are. For example, somebody who wear pink Mohican, you know, is a fun-loving person. You know, they're, 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 they're extroverted. A shy person will not wear a pink Mohican. So your hairstyle also tells you who you are. Yes, some black tribes do have blonde hair and blue eyes. That is true. But the fact of the matter is, the majority of black women wearing blonde hair today and auburn hair do not come from the tribe of black people who have natural blonde hair and blue eyes. Your hair is very much part of who you are. We can't get away from that. Now, black women will say, oh, but it's my choice. It's my choice. And of course it's your choice. And adults will be allowed to choose what works best for them. But again, why are you making that choice? We've been so brainwashed that we don't even understand how we've come to this point. If it's choice, why are you not choosing fake dreadlocks or fake Nubian bumps? Or why are you not doing um, threaded hair? Or why are you not doing extensions like our ancestors? Because we've been brainwashed to see all that as ugly and not good enough. And so although it's your choice, the choice is based on looking more European, looking more Caucasian, wearing more bone straight hair. As black women, we really need to stop and ask ourselves, why did we choose this? 
this bone straight hair over this or this or this. So these are just some of the facts that I like to share. I've done a lot of research on hair, the history of hair, the politics of hair. And I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's sad that as a race, we're not allowed to wear our hair. Because when you wear your hair, society will see in a certain way. You may not get the same opportunities at work. Schools may not even want you. You know, it's really sad that we can't wear our hair and get where we want to get. And I understand that's why some black women choose to wear the fake hair just to get ahead. You know, I understand it. But anyway, I just wanted to share this piece of history with you about the social political of hair. And I hope you've learned something new. Join me next week for another episode of African Vibes with Black Coffee. Bye.